sports show about sports-related topics all the way from Little League to the pros and everything in between. We like to educate the community on the good ways of sports and the bad ways of sports and how to avoid the bad and how to stay focused on the good. Uh, for to- we want to prevent injuries and get people to play sports as long as they can in a healthy way and uh, hopefully we can uh, shed some light on, on, on the fun times of sports. Uh, we have uh, guests and uh, sponsors and the sponsors will be, will, will be coming soon. This is our, our third show and uh, so far so good. You're able to, to see us on, uh, for the local viewers, Time Warner Channel 3, the public access, you can see us there. Or you can see us on YouTube, on City Lose Sports View. So today, my first guest, we've got Hall of Fame jockey, four-time Eclipse Award winner for the most outstanding jockey, Kentucky Derby winner, and legendary jockey, Mr. Lafitte Pinkai. Lafitte, how are you doing? Yeah, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of stuff to cover, and, and what comes to mind is is the number of great horses that you've ridden, from Sham to Swayo to Affirmed. It's uh, Is it the, the horse race that you remember more, or is it the horse? No, most of the time it's the uh, the race that I remember, like winning the Kentucky Derby and winning the uh, Rear Scope races and uh, the Belmont three times and the the race. But I remember the horse too. I mean, uh, uh, you have to uh, ride really, really a good horse to, to win those type of races. Now, are, are the horses, do they have... A, a competitive mind of their own, where you you have you have to encourage them at times, or maybe yeah. hold them back at times. Yeah, some horses are very competitive. When they see the, the the horse beside them, they they try harder. They want to finish first. And some horses you have to make them do it. You know, they have the ability, but you have to get him out of them. And uh, some horses uh, they are very hard to ride. And some horses are very easy to ride. We call them push button. They just go out there and they just try to run most of the way. And sometimes you, you use different tactics. Sometimes you don't want to go to the lead, you try to get him back. And uh, sometimes you want to take him way back. And to do that, you have to grab him, even grab him when they leave the gate right away, or just give him the, throw the reins. You know, it depends on the type of a horse that you ride. Now, is, is it the horse or the jockey that prefers the inside or the outside lead? Or is it both? Well, depends. You know, sometimes you get trapped in the inside with a good horse where you don't want to be there. And uh, you try to work your way out of there, out of the trap, you know. And uh, usually when you ride a really a superior horse, you don't want to take chances inside of getting trapped or getting bothered. So you try to come around. The, the, does the horse sense the crowd or, or the other horses? How, how can you tell when you, you know... Sometimes I've seen jockeys in, in the winning circle saying, yeah, I could tell when, when I got on him or her today that it was, it was going to be a good day. Well, some, some de- depends how you, uh, you feel the, the, the horse reacts. Sometimes sometime horses change from one race to the other. You know, some, in some races they're very calm and they don't run that good. And the next time you see them, they are, they, we call it they are in, on the muscle. They, they feel strong. They feel like they want to go. They feel like they, they are a little more nervous. And you you know that he's ready to do something, but some horses when they come, this when they run the be- better. You know, it all depends. You know, the different. So, of the great races, are are there are there ways to beat the horse, or there's a way to beat the other jockey? Well, <laughs> there are some jockeys that are very tough to beat. They're very smart. They always they always use good tactics on the horses. You know, and. Uh, and and you know who they are, and uh, you try you try to do the same thing. You know you try to follow them, or you try you you try to learn from the jockeys too. You know when they, I remember when I was riding when when a jockey came into town and he start doing really good. I would watch him to see what he was doing that it made the difference. What I could learn from him, you know, and if I could learn something from him, I would do it. You know, and it happened a lot of times where jockeys I learned something from jockeys. But you started in 1966, so you started riding in uh, in Panama. Yes. 
Did did you did you learn jockeying from a school or did you learn it? Your, your father was a jockey. Yes, he was a jockey, but he was never around me. Okay. He was riding in another country in Venezuela. In fact, uh, the first time I saw him when, was when I was about 18 years old. Oh, okay. About 18 years old, I was just coming to this country. I came here when I was 19. So, uh, but they had a, a school over there where the uh, uh, an old jockey, that retired jockey, he was the professor. You know, he he would tell us things about how to grab the reins, what to do. And but the main thing that I learned from him was that uh, uh, you always have to be in good shape. He always told me you always try to be in good shape, and I always did that throughout my career. I was always in good shape to ride my horses. Sometimes I was too weak because I had to diet, diet it a lot. You know, I ate very little, but most of the time I was in good shape. How much control does a jockey have a, of a horse, or or, or is it is is it sometimes you can't control him and let him burn out the energy? Maybe? Well, yes. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you can control him, and sometimes you can. There are some horses that sometimes they they leave the gate, and uh, you want to take him back, or, or or be if you are on the lead, not open up too many lanes, but they break and they just you can stop him. They just go, you know. So you learn something from them, and then if you get to ride him the next time, you 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 try to uh, do it in a different way where they don't get so excited and they don't they don't show so much speed. And the, the, you were saying that uh, the professor in, in Panama, that that it was a jockey school or a riding it, school? No, it was a, it was a jockey school. The same thing, right, jockey school, riding school. You know, they teach you how to ride the horses. Do Do they have anything like that in in this country? Well, uh, I know in Kentucky, Chris McCarron had, ha, has a school of jockey, and some good jockeys have come out of that school. And uh, uh, there's another school over here in California. I don't know where it is, but I know a retired jockey called Frank Garza is running him, running it. Okay, because. I'm sure there, there's viewers out there who, who you, you know, when they, they, they see someone who, who's, who's not going to be tall, they say you would be, you know, you may want to become a jockey. But yeah. I'm, I don't think it's that yeah. easy. You just go up to Santa Anita and say, hey, I want to be a jockey. <laughs> yeah, well. You, how would they begin well, to, they, to get into that field? Well, they, first they had to learn how to uh, gallop horses and uh, two-year-olds, get, uh, get acquainted with two-year-olds and and first of all, when I started, I learned how to take care of him first before I even got on the horse to walk him, you know? I had to learn how to clean him, how to clean the stall and all that. And I'm pretty sure it might be the same thing over here, I don't know, but uh, they usually learn on the farm and then they come to the track and they get, they get hired by a trainer. And the trainer uh, might give him some horses to gallop and to breeze and when if he wants to be a jockey, when he sees that he's fit, well, he, he probably uh, get him his license, you know, to ride. He probably give him a chance to ride one of his horses. Great, that that, that because that that's helpful to those who yeah. want to get into the sport. Yeah. And I'm sure there's other areas, but I, I do want to get into your, your some of the great races that you've ridden in, especially this one. This yeah. is, if you can get a shot of this, Jose. This is the day. Lafitte Pinkai broke the race, broke uh, William, Willie Shoemaker's, uh, this is a race where he broke Willie Shoemaker's r uh, record for the winningest horse, winningest, uh, most wins as a jockey in the history of the sport. And this was aboard Irish Nip. Yes. And this was <laughs> in what race? Well, I think that was about the, I think it was about the fifth race or sixth race, I don't remember correctly, but uh, it was uh, December 10, 1999. And, and, and it I, looks like Santa Anita. That was Hollywood Park. Hollywood Park. Yes, and that was my 8,834 race. Wow. Yes. So, I'm sure this was an amazingly special moment. Are there yes. races yeah. that really stand out in your yeah. head? That maybe not necessarily it's because of the race, but because of the horse. Or was it is? What's the most satisfaction you get? Because or or is it all, all three? The the race, the track, well, the horse. Well, it's, it's when you win a race, or especially when you win a big race, it's very satisfying for 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 it was for myself, for and especially for the owner of the horse, 
you know, they get very happy. And it's, you come to the winner's circle and you see everybody is clapping and cheering for you and everybody's happy. You know, it's nice to see people happy. Especially, and that, especially the ones with the winning ticket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, and that, to me, that was a very big satisfaction, you know, that uh, I could make people happy. <laughs> of the horses that you've ridden, which include Sham, Swale. Now, Swale was the son of Seattle Slough. Yes. Um, which is the best horse you've ever ridden? The best, the best horse I ever rode was a firm. Affirmed. And the best filly that I ever rode was a filly called Bayacoa. Bayacoa. Yeah, from Argentina. Now, yeah. affirmed you rode when a firm was two year old, a two year old, and then a four year old. I rode him as a two year old, I rode him as a three year old, and then I rode him as an older horse, a four year old horse. Yeah. Okay. And I, um, I, I, he gave me a lot of pressure riding him. Big races. Yeah. How, how's, oh. Now, you rode him as a two year old, but then when it came to the Kentucky Derby, when a firm became a three year old, Steve Cawthon was a jockey. Yes. Well, uh, me and my agent made a big mistake because uh, we had a chance to go and ride him in Saratoga as a, as a, as a two-year-old. And uh, he, the, all the big races were coming, like the Kentucky Derby and all those races. So we were riding at Delmar, and I remember my agent came up to me, and he asked me, he says, listen, there is a phrase where a firm is going to run. It's a small race. But we have a lot of good mounts over here. We have, like, in those times, we, we, uh, we had nine races. Uh, the nine races, I was on nine horses, and most of them, they were favorite. And he says, uh, I think we got a chance to stay over here and tell Lazaro Barrera, the trainer, that we'll ride him the next time. Let's pass this race, and, and we'll ride him next time. So he did that, and Lazaro said, yeah, that's fine. So we agreed to stay and ride in a firm, let somebody out ride him in this race and ride him the next one. But what happened was Steve Catton, he was, he came up, he, he was starting to be a very sensational jockey over there, apprentice jockey. So he was winning all the races and he got the mount on the firm. So he wins on a firm, right? At Saratoga. So, at Saratoga. Now, when we tried to get back on him in a, in a, in a race call, I think it was the Huff, the, uh, the hopeful, Lazaro said, no, you didn't come and ride him. Now, a missed Steve, opportunity. Steve Catton is going to ride him. So he, he won the offer with him. And from then on, you know, he won all the next race, the, the triple crown. The triple crown. Yeah. But I got him back later on, you oh, know, yeah. in some of the very important races too, you know. But of course, I, I, I miss him uh, not being with him in the triple crown race. But you won your derby in 84 with Swale. Yes, I did. That, yeah. and, you know, of, of the Triple Crown, and uh, in a minute I'll ask you why you think there hasn't been, uh, why it's been so difficult to win the Triple Crown, but the longest leg of the Triple Crown, the Belmont, yeah. is arguably the toughest race yeah. of them all, and you've won those several times. Yeah, uh, that's a tough race to win. You know, and, and then been in the past, many horses that uh, they have been very close to win the Triple Crown, and they just miss in the Belmont, because it's a mile and one half, one mile and one half race, and you know, winning the Kentucky Derby, winning the Prix, this, you know, it takes something out of them, and uh, they they just every time they come they come a little bit short. And they've even extended it. You were saying a week, uh, as we were speaking earlier, yeah. they've ex extended it to three weeks. Three weeks late. now, yeah. Which they have a little more chance to uh, to recuperate, you know. But it's still still is tough to win. Uh, that is fascinating information, and, and we're going to take a break here, and we'll come back and get uh, more more of your thoughts. Uh, you've been watching City Loose Sports View with the great Lafitte Pinkai, and uh, we'll be back shortly. And uh, we got some great stuff, uh, including the Kentucky Derby uh, and Lafitte's thoughts. We'll be back. Welcome back to City Loose Sports View. Uh, we've got a very special guest here, Mr. Lafitte Pinkai, uh, Hall of Fame jockey. And uh, we got you on at a perfect time. In about three or four weeks, we got the Kentucky Derby coming up. Uh, 
Are you involved with the Kentucky Derby? Do you go out and see the races? We well, haven't gone the last few years to, to Kentucky. In fact, uh, they hired me to go over there and, and go to different places uh, in the racetrack so I can uh, take uh, take uh, pictures with people and uh, and talk and mingle with them. And, and they ask me a lot of questions. They ask me a lot of questions about horses, about my career, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun when I go. The... Uh the Kentucky Derby, is that something that the, the jockeys look forward to all year, or, or is it all, all of those three legs? Oh, of the, of no, the, the, no, definitely the Kentucky Derby is a race that uh, the, every jockey wants to win. You know, if, I'm pretty sure that uh, every young kid that is learning how to be a jockey, you ask him what race he would like to win, he will say the Kentucky Derby. I mean, that's a race, that's the race. You know, and uh, and you gotta get lucky to win it. You have to get a, lucky to ride a good horse and 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 get a good trip. And there's so many factors, you know, that that you can ha you you have to win that race. And you know, finally, when I won that race, you know, it was a dream come true for me because first of all, because I finished five seconds before, you know, and uh, I won it. That's the race I won it. And finally, when I won it, well, that's you know, it was it. If if I did my homework correct did you race eight or nine times in the derby before you won it no i i raced more than that i think i probably raced about she's about 15 times something like that i think in the derby in the, the derby yeah what what is the so uh, what is the process for a jockey to get on a horse in the in the kentucky derby is it did you you go and contact the owner or the trainer, or do they come and contact the well, jockey? Well, we uh, we have agents, and the agents uh, he uh, he he talks to the owners, he talks to the trainers. He uh, if if he has a good jockey that he can sell very easily, he can go to any trainer. He can get mounts for any trainers. Some 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 agent got jockey they are they are not a, 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 as good as others and uh, he gonna have trouble selling his jockey you know, but like uh, I was always winning a lot of races so it was easy for my agent to go to a trainer and says your horse I know you have a two year old would you like Pink Eye to ride him and most of the time they say yes so I get to ride some good two year olds and those two year olds start winning and uh, and then you if you have two or three two-year-olds that they were good prospect to go to the Kentucky Derby. Well, and then you have to make a decision which one you, you prefer to ride. So they hope to establish a relationship between you and the horse to get a, yeah. a, a good uh, response from each other. Um, why, why do you think since 1978 we haven't had a, a triple crown winner? Is it because of the tracks, the jockey or the horse, or is it just... Does it get tougher? I don't know. Maybe maybe horses, maybe these horses of today are not as consistent as they used to be. You know, I don't know. Um, I I have no idea. Is it the pedigree? Maybe. No, I don't think so. They 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 are some well-bred horses. You know, but I I have no idea. There have been a few that that have been yeah. close. Now I yeah. I I know.